Hello everybody, you're very welcome back to Law Hero. My name is Jen and I make videos about the law and today is a different kind of video. It's kind of like a bitchy gossipy kind of video with no legal substance. So um, I hope that doesn't make you tune out. But this is more of a question around behavior. The question is workplace romance, yes or no? So I put it up on my Instagram page, which is at Law Hero IRL. And I asked people like, you know, what they thought. And I have all the responses here. And of course they're going to remain anonymous. But I am so thankful that people responded because it's always so interesting to know what people are thinking, especially um, when it's anonymous. I think you get the most value out of it. So I put up, do you think a workplace relationship in the legal field, but I suppose it can be used everywhere, is a good idea. So this is the first comment I got back. Worked in an Irish multinational abroad, all Irish expat colleagues getting together. To be honest, the company didn't seem to care as long as it didn't interfere with work. As one, they were single as their partners uh, couldn't get visa for the US, so they would be getting with Irish work colleagues who also lived abroad and there was no ticking clock or pressure to marry. Also, people tended to work long hours, so having a partner in the same time zone, office, industry, support that work ethic. I guess the company saw it as a benefit in that ambitious people were able to progress their careers abroad without sacrificing romantic partners. Numerous people got married from that company, and honestly, there was no issues as long as there's no, uh, no affairs. Um, one guy had an affair which impacted his work performance and he was let go otherwise everyone could see the benefit of colleague relationships and honestly it didn't bother anyone it was almost expected given that expats had left their families etc okay so that is extremely interesting and it's something I never considered before um, I have heard that happening out in like Dubai and Abu Dhabi especially among Irish people kind of sticking together but I suppose I never really thought of it out you know in America that people do that too but again that kind of makes sense if you're working in the US like it's so it must be so difficult to have a long distance relationship and yeah I mean where else are you going to meet people who understand your culture understand what you're going through like they're going through the same uh experience as you that's almost like trauma bonding in a way because you're bonding over the trauma of missing home being irish and all of that um from my own personal perspective i must be kind of weird because whenever i went abroad i would avoid other irish people but maybe that's just me and maybe i'm just weird uh, I, I but then again I did take up Irish dancing again, but I think that was more of a competitive thing because I just wanted to show people how much better I was at them Irish dancing. So yeah, that's not really true either. But yeah, getting back to the point around from an employer perspective, I actually do think it is advantageous from the employer point of view to have your employees hooking up. Um, because then just like you know having your laundry done or your food or your gym all being on site the distractions externally are less so if your romantic life is also housed within the organization I don't see the downside from an employer perspective I suppose we can all readily see what the downsides are from an employee perspective and that's why I want to move on to what the next person said um, and I would think the next few comments actually look at the downside so the next one said hi there a response on the office romance piece I worked in HR and met my now husband through work had all those worries at the start but we chatted and agreed that we were in separate teams different levels and will be respectful kept it confidential until we were serious and i've never looked back i do know as a trainee solicitor newly qualified it might differ if it's someone in your intake or someone on the team you might worry about repercussions but apply a bit of common sense respect and good communication to any situation and you'll be grand you only live once so sorry that's actually largely positive we'll get on to the more negative ones yet yeah and I would agree um 
I think it is definitely a good tip to keep it confidential until you're serious. Um, because, you know, otherwise there is, what's the point? What's the point in people knowing other than kind of just gossip? Um, then from the point of view of a trainee solicitor or newly, or newly qualified, I suppose in a way, not that you're competitors, but you're being you, you know you may be fighting for the same job position so if one of you gets it and the other one doesn't that's going to be a fairly difficult position for both of you to be in I would say um but I think the point around you know applying common sense respect and good communication I think that's that's good advice in any situation it's I I think it really does depend on the environment you're in so if you're in a pent up competitive environment adding in romance might be the straw that breaks the camel's back as in if you're in a very high pressure situation and you add in romance may not be the best idea it may be nice to have something outside of work to distract you from the pressure whereas if you're in a very chill environment where you know everybody feels secure in themselves their psychological safety I, I can see that working much, much better. But in my experience in corp- corporate law firms, it's just not like that. Given the billable hour, given the pressure to perform, um, given the doing more in less time rhetoric that has come with a more competitive economic capitalist society. I just, I, from my point of view, you can say all the good com- communication, respect, etc., but that only works in a chill work environment, which I don't feel like a corporate traineeship is. That's just my two cents. Okay. Um, so somebody who agrees with my standpoint is the following. I would always try to avoid engaging in a wor- romantic work relationship at work. I understand though, some people don't have many other places where they get to interact with some people on a regular basis and create meaningful connections. So this point is really interesting and I actually discussed this with my trainee and I call it camp hot, which means, and I think I borrowed that from like Shell and Lester or something. What it basically means is you're spending so long in work that the human brain looks for the most attractive person in its surroundings because like it's a, it's a survival thing. We're looking for the most attractive mate in our surroundings and we're going off what we can see okay so the more you get exposed to somebody the more you find them attractive just because the more you learn about them the more you become biased towards them and especially if you're attracted to them already they will become way more appealing the more time you spend with them and of course if you're in a high pressure situation where your cortisol is high and you're you're bordering on a traumatic situation again that trauma bonding thing is going to come into play and you're going to you're going to latch on to that person as a source of comfort but that doesn't necessarily mean that objectively it's a good idea. And what you'll find is like, and this is something that I like, you know, people have their work crushes. When you leave that workplace, you'll start thinking to yourself, what on earth? Like, what was I thinking? That person is nowhere near what I would usually find attractive. I was just so stressed that I literally latched on to the closest thing um too attractive that was near me and so that that is one thing and because you're so um work driven and you're not seeing people outside of work that becomes your world and yeah um your your world view is pretty narrow so i i do find that a really interesting uh point and then uh the same point is made again where you know where you have to get in a workplace relationship make sure it's sensible and mature and maybe agree to work in a different department or office eventually so i think that is actually a good point as well if you do have to get into an office romance i would say to be sound and for other people's benefit it is better if you're working on different teams can you imagine how uncomfortable that would be and i'm sorry i've been there i've seen people on the same team who are romantically connected and it's just 
it just tips the balance in a way that neutral friendship never will if you understand me there's an intimacy and there's a how do I put this close closeness that goes to being romantically connected that it is very hard to be neutral very very difficult and the workplace thrives on neutrality you know we thrive on that fairness that equitable nature treating everybody the same not having favorites um you know the team the sense of team nobody's above the team but when romance comes into it the, that fairness goes out the window i personally think um then this person makes a very good point that sometimes a relationship can be used as a professional advantage now traditionally and i would say the media has taught us that that in a male female dynamic especially because usually males are the incumbent and in the hierarchy are usually higher up um that a woman uh, would be forced to sleep her way up a hierarchy uh, in order to be respected I would say from my perspective that has definitely not been my experience looking at women who are at the top of their game they definitely didn't have to sleep their way to be there um, but it would be remiss of me to ignore this tactic which is using um feelings and romantic intimacy to possibly get ahead that is certainly a tactic deployed by some people whether it's intentional intentional or not it doesn't matter because at the end of the day as I said that outcome is a lack of neutrality and when I say neutrality it can either be positive or it can be negative the opposite of love isn't hate um it's apathy so if we think about it love and hate in a professional sense if you are in love with somebody and um, they need help or they need a dig out or they need some sort of a like advantage it's going to be very difficult to say no to that unless you're a very very strong principled person and in the same vein if that relationship has gone sour a lot of the time people end up leaving the workplace because they just don't want to be around that person nor do they want the repercussion or the negative side of that relationship playing out in the workplace so yeah um like if you watch um you know the office and the romance that is there like you can just see that the results of those relationships are just not neutral and you kind of have to be ready for that it would be naive not to be so the interesting thing is the men who responded to this post were very honest about how they used office romance as an in whereas none of the women said that and i find that very interesting uh so this guy said and i'm saying it's a guy because um I think if the shoe was on the other foot, um, people would raise their eyebrows. So he said, I was involved with a manager in my previous job. She was not my direct manager, but she was the go-to person. And uh, whenever we had a problem, I have to admit, I found myself having lots of problems just to go and see her. And like that is natural, especially if you fancy somebody and you have an opening to speak to them. As I said, it's camp hot. Um, they're in the vicinity why not there's no rules to say that you can't be in an office relationship and they may reject you so I do understand that as well and if like like that guy this woman was his senior um, there's literally no real risk for him he's, he's not really shooting his shot because he's just spending more time with her um, but I do find that interesting Um no no female said they did the opposite like we didn't have any females saying they went to a male um office manager to spend more time with them because i believe that would be just more taboo and i don't think people would be as readily saying that 
as it would the other way around. Um, so this one's interesting. I'm going to work in the same firm as my ex, um, which I'm dreading. He's a few years ahead of me in training contract. Uh, I'm in his department and he'll have qualified and he'll be giving me work. Ooh. We worked at the firm, we're still in a relationship, but I did my internship there, but thankfully different teams, so very little, little interaction out of social stuff. But it definitely made me realise if you're going to have an office romance, they preferably need to be in a wholly different department and you absolutely cannot bring anything from the relationship into work. Um, now we've broken up, I know we'll be professional, but it just adds a layer of stress, which um, I wish I could avoid. And yeah, I really feel for this person because, you know, like the heart wants what the heart wants. If you, um, if you're in a social situation and you just connect with somebody, your heart doesn't know that this is you know your heart and it's going to discount the fact that it's going to end badly because you know we're we're creatures of survival and we're we're optimists when it comes to romance we have to be so that the human race can continue so i totally get that i totally get that um and i can totally understand how would it be a source of stress especially after you break up and especially if they're your senior but i would say it's probably worse for them to be honest <laughs> um yeah i mean you'd have to use your discretion i would say in avoiding that person but yeah um they happen like in my experience it happens a lot a lot of people get together a lot of people break up um it's happened to me and now thankfully I managed to keep it out of the workplace as best I could I'd be a very proud person uh, and I'd be very um loathe to show my vulnerabilities or talk about romance in the workplace like I would find it very difficult to talk about my romantic partner in the workplace just because I find it's such a soft vulnerable piece to me I don't know what it is maybe it's like trying to put up a trying to put up a front or something but for me it was the pride piece that stopped me like you know um one of the seven deadly sins i was too proud to let people see that i had a soft side and um wouldn't let myself be vulnerable enough but in a lapse of judgment on my part i did now thankfully that person was leaving anyway and I knew that and that probably played into my discounting of it in my head and I, I knew it, if it did get out I wouldn't have to deal with the consequences but um, I'd say I was a little bit more aware um, especially when I was younger of the downsides of it and um, I was also very aware of putting people on a pedestal because so basically uh, when you're younger people who have you know if when you don't have a car and you don't have an apartment and you don't have a job people who have those things seem amazing but of course you're not going to do the emotional rigor that you're going to do when you're in that position you know when you're from a resource perspective more equal to that person your level of due diligence is going to be more rigorous whereas if there's a resource imbalance like there is when you get with somebody who's your senior um it's just definitely a bias that you can't ignore part of the attraction is because of the social status so i would imagine that that doesn't happen especially um if you're really new to it and haven't thought about that or haven't thought about it going south um the last one the last one is definitely no to office romance the person involved just becomes a tea break topic of the day unless the relationship can be kept private a hundred percent no to romance with management or boss so yeah very 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 clear opinion there so listen i have um the final piece of this video is just some tips i have um and just to round this off so the pros are you have a shared professional interest in being a lawyer 
we've already discussed that the second is the convenience piece that that person discussed you go to work together you work together you come home together you're saving a lot of time there you also know what the other person's going through yeah it's convenient that leads into the support system piece and the enhanced communication piece and it can help from a networking perspective because that person may know more people in the business and can join the dots for you etc etc for me the pros they just don't outweigh the cons for me I'm just a no to office romance and um, these are my reasons why you should have professional boundaries you're not in work to make friends you're there to do a job be professional you have a professional license you're there to serve clients not your heart and your soul and you can say "Eh, but I met the love of my life at work that's good for you I don't care Uh, workplace dynamics it's just not fair on everybody else you lose that neutrality it can become hostile nobody asked for that work is hard enough without adding in another layer that's my opinion and that leads into the perception of favoritism argument it could impact your career i think negatively if um you know that professionalism piece is in doubt or god forbid there's some kind of emotional outburst i don't think that's a sign of somebody who's in control uh, of themselves i would also say from a legal and ethical perspective there's definitely some red flags there in that there's a conflict of interest especially from um you know uh, if if you're in a relationship with your boss people will always wonder did you get to where you got to because of your behavior because of your competence And also, I would say, you know, if it's a strict place you're working in, you could be veering into disciplinary if you get up to some stuff in the workplace. And for the love of God, keep all that stuff off your work computer. That's the last thing I'll say. Anyway, I really enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. See ya.